Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Into the Nothing. And on this episode, it's just with me, your favorite host, Patrice. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that subscribe button. If you're in a place where you can rate the podcast, please rate it. Drop a comment down below of what you learn or what is insightful or any questions that you have so we can interact, we can chat. I'd love that. So thanks so much for being here. I so appreciate you. This podcast is going so well. I'm so proud of it. And um, yeah, just keep it on, keep it on. I'd like to say there's some big changes being made, but really what's being asked of me and this podcast is just to continue. And here I am, continue it. So thanks so much for being here. On this episode, I want to talk a bit about my trip to India. I just got back from a trip to India and on that trip, I learned a lot about energy specifically. And so, I'm going to talk about India, just really about what I learned from my perspective about energy, about focus and about intention. Yeah, I realize it's everything. India is such a hot pot of, well, life is so different there than it is here in Australia. It really is. And I've been to India once before. 12 years ago and I studied there for a bit at the when I was studying design and this trip was really different that I just went on. I went there because I was supporting a group of women with a woman who was leading the group called Rebecca Thompson who has been a friend and a mentor of mine for four years and she asked me if I would go and support this group of women. So there we were in a group of nine. And on this trip, it was an immersion into India. So it wasn't like your standard retreat where you're at one place and you're just sitting in circle. And it was really like, here's India. Let's go for it. Let's experience it, which I really loved. And yes, we definitely sat in circle. We had an opening ceremony and We did different activities, just a few simple things together, but mainly it was about being there because the biggest part of the trip, we were staying in at an ashram at a place called Sri Narayani Pedam in Valor in the south of India. And, yeah, I think we were there for nine days and, whoa, did it blow my mind. (laughs) Such a special place, such a special place. And this place that is not only a set of temples, and I'll drop a link below to the website if you want to go and check it out. It's not just a set of temples, like a structure of temples. It is also schools, two schools in fact, hospitals, a huge green project, they're planting trees everywhere, they're doing loads of sustainability projects like zero waste. They feed 5,000 people a day that walk through the temples for free. I mean, the level of charity and of giving and everything is quite profound and and it's really only been running this whole kind of community around this ashram for 30 years and when you're there, we everyone in our group, and I was too, I just couldn't believe how much was taking place, how much was practically not just wheels in motion but embedded and making changes in a 30-year period. It was like, whoa. And the person, I guess the person, the person behind all of this that started all of this from what I have learnt is – a person called Sri Shakti Amma. And what I know of this person is that before he, this man, was born in a simple village not far from Valor, before this person was born, his mum was getting visions and, and receiving that this child is going to be special. And then when... She had the baby, 
he had certain markings on his body and everyone was like, wow, he's got some some special markings. It's a very special child. And then things happened in, in this boy's childhood, like he would just be at their, I guess, their temple, their local temple, and he'd be naturally blessing people or um, teaching people and just from a really young age. And then also... We're going there with we're going there with energy, guys, in this conversation with magic. So welcome the judgment. Welcome the skepticism. I think it's healthy. I think it's normal. And just allow it to be here if it comes up. Um, because I had it all too. <laughs> and I think everyone does. It's pretty normal. When you don't know something, when something's unknown, there's just like, what? That's BS or that's crazy. Not that I want to plant those ideas into your head. But so, yeah, when he was a boy, he was in science or something at, at school and his teacher was sharing something about energy or, I don't know, the universe. And I don't think it felt right to this this boy. And so he, he got a white rose and in his hand he turned it into a red rose and gave it to his teacher. And so there were, I think there were lots of these types of things um, in his childhood and, you know, I guess if you were to talk, well, not that I want to put it in the box of Hinduism or religion, but, yeah, this is within the Hindu culture, which in the areas that we went to, we went to three different locations on this immersion that went for two and a half weeks and I've just gotten back from. And for two and a half weeks, yeah, we saw, a, I, I think we were predominantly in areas that had a lot of, I, I guess, predominantly Hindu Hinduism. And... It's just so beautiful to see because it's so just, it's so just part. It's like people getting up and watching the news, they're getting up and they they are connecting with whatever they're connecting with in the morning and they're putting, you know, the dot on their head, which is called kumkum, um, that you might have seen, like they're a red dot and, you know, just the clothes that people wear and they're not, a lot of them wear, don't wear shoes because it's just part of their lifestyle and it just feels so different to hear like, you know, they're all eating food with their right hand and they're going to the bathroom and doing everything with their left hand. And it's just it's just part of their life. It's so I, I love going to places that's so different to here in Australia or in Brisbane. Like my something in my brain and my soul really craves that on this planet there is so much variety and people are living so differently. Like there are cultures that are li- eating with chopsticks and we're eating with a knife and fork and some are eating with just with their hands and different foods, different colours, different smells. Like I just love that earth offers so much variety and there's something in me that needs it to live. <laughs> so, okay, so back to this this boy. Um, and when he was 16, he was on a bus and he had had a vision and had a feeling and a knowing that in this lifetime he was to embody the energy of Narayani, which is divine mother in Hindu culture, the divine mother. Um, Maybe if you know anything about Hinduism, I've I've been looking into it a bit the last couple of years, last four years, learning about Lakshmi, you might have heard of Vishnu or Ganesha, and there's just these different energies that we have inside of us to to support us in our lives. Um, I'm I'm not affiliated with any religion, but I find all religion really fascinating and I love aspects of all of them and um, find aspects of all of them, stuff that I don't want to take on too, like anything in life. So, so yeah, so this man, this boy, 16, he then want, is like, I'm, I'm here to embody, which in Hindu culture has happened for thousands of years. They have these things called avatar, where avatar, where energies or um, one of the gods or the deities wants to live inside a, a human body for a lifetime and do certain work. So Narayani came to Amma and now Amma is going to embody Divine Mother, Narayani. And so he went home and told his parents and they were like, you're nuts, <laughs> you're crazy, but he just, she, sorry, now and then refer to her as she because she's Divine Mother. She started, it's intuitively went to this ant's nest, this ant hill, 
And um, in Hindu culture, ant hills are very sacred and very special and have lots of symbolism and meaning, like everything. And Amar started to practice this really devotional practice called puja on this ant's nest, which is, look, there's lots of profound meanings to this and I'm probably going to butcher this in my simple understanding of it after learning about it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> but I watched that this happen every single day that I could, this beautiful devotional ceremony where the priest or Amma, whoever it is, will sit and just with the loving intention get into a meditative state with, you know, even pure the purity of like clean clothes, having washed, being clean, meditation, clean in the mind, and then just offering pure love into this ant's nest. And that looks like in terms of the physical practice, pouring, I think there's 108 things that you can pour in a puja, and they can be turmeric, it can be coconut water, it can be flowers, and all the flowers that are chosen are very intentional. They have very specific meaning, every one of them for whatever reason, high vibration. And so just pouring into this ant's nest and doing this loving devotional practice and people started to come. And so Amma, who's now embodying the, the goddess or Narayani, is doing this ritual and people are coming and it just starts to be like, like just it's this idea of like just start where you are, just start where you are and just keep the it will come. Like if you just are devotional and loving with the thing in front of you. And so Amma was doing this practice for like hours and hours a day. Now, that ant's nest has turned into the most amazing temple complex, beautiful beyond measure and huge. Like, I don't know, is it hectares worth or hectare plus two schools with a third one being built right now or about to be built with hospitals and all of these green projects and just this ripple effect that I can't even fathom. But it started from somebody doing this devotional practice called puja on this ant's nest every single day. Now, Amma, this is the, the person who's embodying Narayani, the goddess. I've met her. She's just so lovely, so easygoing, like just feels so normal. It's not like she's like she doesn't, not that that even matters, but she's not dressing like a woman or anything. She like, looks like from a Western perspective if we were to look at her it's just a guy, but she's embodying divine love, <laughs> which probably doesn't make sense to you anyway. It wouldn't have made sense to me before I left, that's for sure. I had no idea what I was doing on this trip, by the way, in like guiding this and facilitating and holding this group of women. I actually just found out like a couple of days before where we were actually going in India. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just, I was just following the threads and so of where to go. So, there's so much to tell you about this place and um, and what I learned, but I just want to give you a f uh, just a bit more context for this. So within the temples and that the whole area, and again, it's like probably like a couple of kilometres kind of the area of the temples, there are no phones to be seen and there are no shoes. And so automatically there's this clean feeling whether you realize it or not, even just knowing that no one's wearing shoes and no one has phones out. Like it's just even that just feels like a purification for me anyway. I love that. And it was funny, one of the last days when we were at one of the puja ceremonies for Ganesha, and by the way, these puja ceremonies now look like for Amar, she's pouring love into a gold small statue of Narayani for hours every single day and Amma does not miss a single day. Like she's sitting there for hours with so much love you can see it, it makes you cry, made me cry. She is lovingly doing this ceremony every single day without fail. Now, if that doesn't just speak volumes about the level of devotion, commitment, focus, intention, I don't know what does. And for me, it's not, you know, what I understand now is that the little statue that she's pouring, this gold statue that she's pouring love into, this is Amma is pouring love into, that you can go and watch these ceremonies, which are just 
amazing. You can go and watch these ceremonies and she's pouring love into it. So it's a battery of energy. It's not just like this, like it's not superficial. Every, you know, initially I would judge it. I'm like, what the fuck is she even doing? What's going But if you just ask a few questions and you get to know a bit more, you start to understand that everything there at that ashram, which again, the link is down below if you want to go check out the location and the details of this place. If you want to go and visit it yourself, if you get the calling, if you get the nudge from this podcast, you've got to follow it. <laughs> um, it'll it'll take you there anyway. You probably don't have a choice. You'll find your way there. But every single thing is so intentional. Everything has so much meaning and intention behind it. Nothing's just done for the sake of it. And that ability to sit there and do that devotional practice of puja and the abhishekam and, and different things that we saw and the cleansing and you know, knowing that when you have to go to these, when you go to these pujas, you go having showered and wearing a clean outfit. And I actually couldn't go to the pujas when we were there at the ashram or go into the temple complex for a few days because I had my period and my cycle. And it's just this cleansing and being so open with my energy, being in my cycle. And I'm sure there's lots of other reasons. But for me, I didn't actually need to know all the reasons why. I just trust the instruction that I was given from the people that were organizing it saying, if you have your cycle, the first four days, you cannot enter the temples. And I'm like, I just trust it. This place is so pure. It's so clean. It's so such a battery of love for anyone who goes into humanity. I don't want to fuck that up. Because the the day that I went there before my period and the days after you're walking around this temple complex and it's just, yeah. Like the second I dropped out of my mind and I went into my body and into my heart, just got out of just like thinking about, oh, look at the pretty gold statues. The second I just tapped out of just like looking at the pretty flowers or just trying to like, oh, judgment or whatever, and I just dropped into my body, all I could feel inside of me was love and I could see beauty all around me. Like it is palpable the energy is so clean there it is energy is poured into these gold statues and into these places so intentionally by so many priests and by ama every single day without fail in service to humanity you get to go and receive love which is actually everywhere but there it's the energy is so clean and so potent we just get to receive love because we're here like you don't need to be special. You don't need to fucking have a degree. You don't need to have anything or be anyone except to be here on this planet, which I think is what really got me. Like I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was go to that ashram and be there and just relax and go into my body. And then there was just a love upwelling from within me that the energy is so pure and so loving. I felt a love just for the sake of love. And, of course, I cried a lot. And on the last day, yeah, just had just, just received so much from that place. And it just makes no sense. This isn't for the mind. This isn't for us to try and figure out. You're like, oh, my God, how does it work? What are the steps? The, the steps are there are no steps. This is where the mind can really trick us up and trying to figure everything out and know everything rather than just receive. Just receive because you're here. And so, yeah, this trip to India, I learned so much about my facilitation, um, yeah, about my own focus and where am I putting my focus in 2024? And it's definitely into this podcast. It's definitely into my YouTube and doing lots of videos. It's definitely into my beautiful relationship with my partner, Ted, really nourishing and fostering that into my friends, into my family. But most importantly, it's into myself because what I've taken away from watching from watching Ama and these other priests do these incredible ceremonies where you're sitting on the floor for hours. Like there's so much, you know, where it's like how much can I be in devotion to this practice and 
and be sitting there when it's uncomfortable and sometimes they're ringing bells in your ears that are like right next to you by the ceremony that's just so shaking you up from the inside out. How much can I stay in my center? Like before I went on this trip to India, I was meditating. I just intuitively was being guided to meditate for hours a day. I'm talking like it was like three hours initially and then it started to get to five hours and seven hours a day kind of thing, nearly seven hours a day. And sitting there in those ceremonies and watching them and watching the devotion, watching the focus, watching the service, like it's they're literally just doing it. And I started to – and they're doing it to fill these metals with – energy with their mind with their mantra and also just this devotional loving practice of pouring turmeric of pouring flowers of pouring coconut water of pouring whatever just these things it just these and it was just the way that they pour it on the statue is so beautiful and so loving so there's so much in what I'm saying, right, that I can take away from this and pour into my life, like pour into this podcast with how devotional I am and how I do things, what energy I'm coming from, like where I'm coming from in myself when I create these is so important. And what I really took away was that I can be a battery to emanate love. You know, water conducts electricity we are predominantly water. Our brain is predominantly water. So what water am I drinking and how devotional am I being within myself with my thoughts and with my feelings? Like what am I thinking to myself about myself and about my life? What am I feeling within myself? Because I'm a battery just as much as these statues of metal, of gold, of copper, of silver that all of the at the ashram that they were all made out of that these priests are pouring love and devotion and mantra and they've got yantras underneath them and yantra are like a sacred geometry that also conducts sound. Everything in the temple was just so, it's all so scientific and so strategic. It was not just put that there, pop that there. It was, and it was all downloaded from Narayani, the divine mother inside of Amma. Like Amma designed the whole thing. Is, is he, she an architect? No, but this is the consciousness when she's so clean and so pure and so devotional, you can just tap in and there's so much available to us. Like the Vedas were able to tap into different frequencies and we can receive information. But it's all within us, right? And this is the thing I really left. Like I can feel all of this love outside of me because it's within me, because of, because of who I am today. And I knew on my last day when I walked this path called the star path at the ashram, which you just get to receive blessings. Like Amma said herself to us in a meeting that we had with her, where she was like, this place is just for people to receive. And then they leave here filled with whatever they've been activated by, their consciousness has been upgraded or whatever. This is my language, not hers. But when you've felt that kind of love, it just changes you. And then... You go home and you are that battery and you are that at home and that's what I am here in Brisbane, Australia and on my podcast and on my YouTube but also and also if you want to follow me on YouTube, I'll put the links down below but also I can be really intentional and devotional and in service to myself so I can be more in service to you and be more in service and devotion to others because it has to come from within and yeah, when I did that last walk on the star path, it was such a big morning for me of just crying and receiving so much magic and me just going, I'm going to receive some more. Like I was like, I'm not going to cap myself. And I just went to more and more temples that morning and just opened myself up. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to receive some more. I'm going to get another blessing from this priest. I'm going to get more blessing. I'm going to bless more of my family. I'm just going to keep on blessing and receiving the blessings. Like who am I to stop this flow of abundance? Keep it coming. And on that morning, I just walked around the temples and particularly the Golden Temple, which you should really look up. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll pop, pop this up on um, on the screen right now, but some pictures of the Golden Temple. It is just absolutely mind-bogglingly beautiful, but you can only really see its beauty when you are tapped into the beauty within yourself. 
You're only ever going to see what's inside of you. And on this morning, after nine days at the ashram, all I could see was beauty and I couldn't stop crying. Like I was crying like, like it was like, it was like, a, it was like heartbroken crying, but it was just, cause it was just so felt, but it was, I would just, because I know that we can only ever see what's inside of us. And because I was seeing so much beauty in the temples, like the detail of the golden temple where Lakshmi is and sitting in front of the statue of Lakshmi and just being on my hands and knees and just receiving and just seeing so much beauty. I was so conscious in that moment that I'm seeing it because I am it. I'm seeing it because I am it and I couldn't stop crying because I was like, oh, I've really worked for this because I've seen a lot of not this in my life, like because of what's been going on inside of me. I haven't been seeing all the beauty as much as I could. And in that moment, that's all I could see. And it made me cry and walk around and just con- I kept on going up to all the places where you could receive even more, like very intentionally, like putting your hand, putting my hands on this yantra where you close your eyes, you meditate, and you can just receive. And I was like, I was just going for it. I was going to all the temples as much as I could. I'm like, where else could I receive? Because I'm going to take it. I'm going to go for it because receiving is giving and giving is receiving. There's no separation. So like there's so much magic that I experienced there. And yeah, I feel like there's more that wants to be shared. Maybe it, there's going to be a part two of this India. I think there needs to be a part two because there's something I want to share with you guys that's like quite mind boggling that I wouldn't have believed it or I would have wanted to believe it, but probably wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. But there's more I want to share about energy and about intention and what's possible and what we experience there. But I'm going to leave that for a part two because I feel like this is enough to talk about intention and focus in this episode and then really go deep into it the next episode. And the whole reason I'm sharing this is just to crack you open a bit more. Like if you've heard my aliens episode, I was just sharing the stuff that over time people have shared with me that have opened up my mind and my consciousness as to what else is possible Because this life is just not what it seems. And particularly in this Western society, it feels like it's just one aspect and there's so many more aspects to be explored and enjoyed and we can tap into our potential and our power far more easily. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much. If you've got any questions, hit me up on Facebook or you can drop me an email at Patrice patrice at patricedouglas.org i love you thank you so much for tuning in and of course there'll be a part two where i'm going to share with you a magical thing that happened in india that's fucking crazy but so not crazy at the same time yeah profound anyway i love you thank you so much if you haven't yet please subscribe and drop a comment if yeah you have any questions or anything you want to share but um of course i'll see you in my next episode thanks for tuning in to into the nothing